Back in that, back in that bag again. Whoa. Hey, 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 hey. Back in that. What's going on, guys? It is Third Sunday morning. Uh, what is this place called? The Cook Shack? Or the, the Cook, Cook Shack? Shack? Best of Fort Worth 2022. We're gonna go in there, get some food, go over to House of Blades, film some B roll. I'm just gonna do it really cinematic like, okay? Whoa, whoa. Oh, say less. I'm back in that bag again. Yeah, yeah. Oh, say less. I'm back in that. Yeah. What you doing? Yeah, yeah. I'm back in that. Hey. Where you going? Hey, hey. Back in that bag again, to bring me around your friends. You know that I'm bagging them. Request me on Facebook, no, I ain't adding them. Positions I had her in. Hit from the back. You can fit right on the shelf, dude. Mm. Premium. <laughs> Wait, what? Premium, Premium knife content. <laughs> We're heading over to House of Blades now. If you guys want to see a Ron's shop tour, go check it out. I already have mine posted, but we're just going to be shooting cinematic B-roll. I'm going to make it look as crispy as I possibly can. We're going to pull out the gimbal and everything. So let's get it. Funny enough, Ron got his ticket very close to ours, or his his gate is really close to ours. Our last moment will be at the gate, and he flies out what like or you, you depart nine minutes after us, yeah, or eight minutes. We're, we're basically on the same flight going to a different destination. Yep, that's that's pretty cool. <sighs> I don't know if I'm gonna film any more, guys. We'll do the rest in the studio. Show you guys what I got at Blade Show. It wasn't much, but you guys can see. Okay, camera's rolling. And we're back in the EDM studio after a full week break from Blade Show Texas. I will be showing you guys everything that I got in terms of a gear haul. But before we get into that, I wanna give a huge shout outs to our sponsors, House of Blades. They made it possible for us to actually attend the show and bring you guys content. We actually got a chance to check out their facility and their shop is just absolutely enormous. I can confidently say if you guys ever visit Fort Worth, Texas to go drop by House of Blades just because they have pretty much every single brand that you can possibly think of. We also got a tour of their laser room, which we can actually see how they custom etch all of their stuff, whether it's on a Yeti, a knife blade, whatever it may be. And then I also got a chance to see their sharpening room, which was pretty cool as well. If you're interested in purchasing a knife either in person or on their website, then make sure that you use code EDM and that will get you 10% off at House of Blades. Thank you so much again to House of Blades. Now let's go ahead and talk about the show and what happened. So my brother Balin and I flew in a little bit early. I believe it was on Wednesday and we actually just toured House of Blades on that first day. After that, we picked up our boy Ron Kwok, crashed a drone in the hotel room, and then we went to go get really nice barbecue. I don't actually think I brought my camera to that. After that, on the second day, we visited Tactile Turn and Tactile Knife Co. and saw their brand new shop. And if you guys have been following me for a long time now, then you'll probably know that I did a Tactile Knife Co. and Tactile Turn shop tour last year, and they've significantly upgraded. This new factory is probably four times the size as the old one, and they have a ton of new machines. Stay tuned because I will have a full shop tour video going live on my channel within the next month or so. After the shop tour, we met up with some of my friends, one of them being Captain Ricky. You guys may have seen him on the vlogs and on the live streams. And that man has been one of my close friends for a good part of three years now. The relationship is still growing. It was the first time actually meeting him in person and I just want to give a huge shout out to Ricky. We had even more barbecue that following day and then Ben Peterson aka Ben Banters as well as Ricky stole my camera and basically just filmed this random short film. I edited it on, I think that's how you say it, on my laptop while we we're down at the show and I made it the intro. That was a really cool experience. You guys should go check out that video if you haven't already. And then of course I went back to the hotel room, stayed up until 5am editing videos with Ron next to me. And 
on the following day was day one of Blade Show. That was absolutely insane. Balin actually woke up at about 4.30 a.m. on that Friday and lined up until 10 a.m. and then got his chance to score a curator. And during the show on day one, it was a little bit more focused to the community. I really wanted to meet you guys, meet some other really cool makers, and just kind of build relationships. It was just a really good time meeting you guys. I mean, shaking your hands, seeing what you guys are carrying, and then just chatting about EDC. And I think that was my most favorite part of the show. It was just a really, really good time. Now I'm gonna skip over a bunch of things because you guys can just watch it on the vlogs, but on day two, I did the same exact thing, but did a little bit more interviews with Tom at Notorious EDC, Savivi, and we, as well as ProTech. So again, you guys go check that stuff out. On the last day, we did go visit House of Blades again. I got a bunch of B-roll, which you guys have probably already seen. Again, huge shout outs to everyone that made this happen, AKA House of Blades, Tactile Turn slash Tactile Knife, as well as all the buddies I met up with, Ron Kwok, Captain Ricky, Marine X, you guys are all awesome. So after all that, when I got home, I was absolutely defeated and then took a week off. I think we did one live stream and now we are here today. I'm gonna show you guys what I got at Blade Show Texas. Now, mind you guys, before I actually traveled down to Texas, I expected to buy nothing. I think the only thing I really wanted to buy was a curator if I had the chance, but we'll get into that here in just a second. But my budget was pretty limited. With that being said, let's show you the first knife that I got, and this is gonna be from Tactile Knife Co. This is their brand new Maverick with the crossbar lock or axis lock. It's got Magna Cut blade steel and black Richlight micarta scales. Now this is Tactile's first go around in terms of an axis lock style knife, and this thing is actually really lightweight. It's very thin and it's pretty decent. It's actually a really good pocketable knife, and you guys should be expecting a review probably here within the next few months after I give it more pocket time. Speaking of Tactile Knife Co, I did also score a pen from Tactile Turn, and this is gonna be their mini bolt action titanium pen. This is the first time I've actually owned the mini variant. I wanna see if this thing fits in pouches, and overall, I just really like that titanium aesthetic. The next knife was actually a gift from my friend Chris over at Renegade EDC, and this is the God of Mischief, or G-O-M. I believe it's got an M390 blade as well as natural micarta Scales. This does have a bolster lock. It's kind of like a frame lock liner lock hybrid, but this thing is just drop shutty. It's got a front flipper and it looks pretty cool, especially with, I guess, this Warren Cliff slash sheep's foot blade. And once again, I'll be posting a review on this knife probably within the next coming months with more pocket time. He also did throw in a few hanks. Stay tuned for that because he gave me like a huge handful of these. This will be a part of the 500K giveaway. Let's get these last two knives out of the way and they're gonna be the XOK or Exoskeleton and Crambit. These are from Riot, and they did give me a couple review samples, one of them being a trainer and then one of them being a live edge knife. Now these are Karambit knives, so I wouldn't normally carry these and I probably won't. But in terms of the knives, these are probably the most unique knives in my collection. Let me just show you how these things operate. So basically there's a push button lock mechanism or a plunge lock and then it's a gravity knife. I've never really seen anything like this. I mean, the Provoke, CRKT Provoke is a little bit similar, but it doesn't fly out like this and then lock in. Some people on my live stream actually thought that it doesn't lock in, but this button lock actually unlocks it and locks it back into place. This may be one of the most dangerous knives in my collection as well, just because when you go to close it, if the blade is not touching this portion of it, it can actually cut your hand like this. So I haven't really been playing around with the Live Edge version. This one is prototype number 40. It's in green and black hardware along with a black coated blade. If you guys wanna see a review on these models specifically, let me know in the comment section below because yeah, these are super interesting. So next up are gonna be pocket art pieces. So the first piece of pocket art that I scored at the show is my Supreme Red Beer Bomb. Like I said in previous live streams, I wanted to meet Tom in person and pick up one of his pieces. So this one right here, the Supreme Red one just really caught my eye just because it matches up with my entire What A Slider loadout for the month. And you guys have heard me rave about the beer bomb. This is a really sought after piece. If you guys are looking to get a beer bomb and miss out on pretty much every single drop like I did, the best way to score a beer bomb is to actually just go up to the Notorious EDC booth. I believe Tom is actually gonna be attending Blade Show Atlanta, so just go up to his booth and purchase one. You guys will definitely be seeing this beer bomb in future monthly pocket dump videos. I can guarantee you that. Now with this next piece, I don't know if you can consider it a piece of pocket art, but this is from my boy Marine X Dion. He actually hooked it up with his throwing card. I believe there's six of 
them made. I think Ron got one and myself got one, but I believe this is a Smith & Wesson heat treated steel that they're using, but it basically just says Marine X on here. This is gonna be more of a showpiece than me actually throwing it at things. So it's probably gonna sit on the shelf back there. Shout outs to Marine X for gifting me this throwing card. There's nothing in my collection that's like this. And yes, bro, I will definitely put it in a monthly pocket dump. Who do you think I am? I wanted to save the best for last just because you guys may have already seen it, but this is gonna be the one-off curator. Now this thing has a lot of controversy behind it just because I tried selling it like an hour after I got it. But essentially I entered a lot of, you guys saw me freak out just because it's such a cool piece. This is a one of one curator that's titanium with a brass inlay. And then you've got the tough guy laser etched along with the Eagle tattoo. Basically I entered the lotto. There was a ton of people on that list. And then Jamie so happened to call my name. You guys can just reference back to that vlog if you want to see my reaction of winning this thing. So let's jump into the controversy. If you're in the JRW Facebook group, then you'll know that I tried to sell this thing about an hour after I got it. Now I didn't put any context behind it. And a lot of people were like, oh, he's just a flipper. And I can totally see why people are saying that. But the reason why I wanted to sell this one specifically is because first, I didn't expect to win the lotto. Second, I've already owned a big text curator from last year. And after carrying that original big text curator, I just thought it was a little too big and too heavy. This thing is about 33% bigger than a standard curator. It might actually even be more than that. And I wanted to maybe have some more funds for the following day on day two of Blade Show. So after I posted, a lot of people went into the comments and then just started railing on this piece at the price that I posted that I decided to take it down completely and then just let it cool off a little bit. It's really not that big of a deal. I'll probably repost it at a different price point just because I mean, it's a one-off curator. I didn't even know what to price it at. Regardless of that, this is a really cool piece. It's going to go to someone else that's going to really be able to appreciate it. In total, I didn't get a ton of stuff like previous Blade shows, but the goal wasn't to go down and buy everything. Now, the last thing I wanted to bring up is the 500k giveaway. We've got a few knives that we're waiting on as well as some stuff from Data Crew. So stay tuned for that. That video may be going live either this week or the following. And you guys that have been following me know what the grand prize is. That's going to be the factor from Winter Blade Co. Oh my God, this thing is so sexy. Magna Cup Blade, titanium scale. It's got this really cool Moku Tai pocket clip. Oh my goodness, this thing is awesome. I wish I could keep it, but it's going to go to one of you guys. Thank you guys so much for coming along with me at the show and you guys best bet there's going to be more content coming soon. If you like this video, throw me a thumbs up. If you disliked it, throw me a thumbs down and I guess we'll have to catch you on the next one. Peace out.